Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast. My name is Devan and Serafino, and I am so happy to be talking to you again today. Today, I am going to be talking to you about Lucifer, the devil, negative energy, however you want to describe it. Billsy Bubs. <laughs> you know, however it is you want to say it. That dark force in the universe, in in nature, or however you choose to classify it. Beings that exist, entities that exist that genuinely do not want to see you prevail. Do not want to see you get ahead. I feel like some people don't want to believe that there's a devil, that demons exist. Okay. I mean, I can't really, I don't know what I could do to convince people of that, but I'm, you know, I would encourage you to stop being naive and understand that such beings are, are around. So this episode is going to talk about like the mindset of the devil, you know, how Lucifer thinks, how he operates. I'm not afraid of him. You know, I've, I've tussled with the devil, you know, more times than I care to recount. And so, but I'm familiar. I like to call him Lucifer. Because why not? You know, that's, that's, you know, one of his names and like, like Dumbledore told us fear of a name increases a fear, the fear of the thing itself. So we like to, we need to call things what it is and call beings what they are. Before I get too into it, remember our website is sexdrugsandjesus.com. We're also on YouTube, Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast, my retail stores down under apparel.com. Thank you for checking those websites out. And recommending them to all your friends, family, lovers, and loved ones. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse 11 sums the point of this episode up nicely, which says, at least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We got to become smart. Like when I was in the military, I was in the Air Force for six years. You know, in order to defeat an enemy, you got to get inside that enemy's head. You got to know how they think, how they operate. You got to be able to look into that, this type of darkness and not be overcome by it. Because the saying is true. When you, when you gaze into the darkness, the darkness looks back. It does. However, we're in this world. And if you're trying to do good, if you're trying to break habits, if you're trying to get out of bad entanglements, bad relationships, bad situationships, any kind of bad situation, that darkness is not going to be very interested in letting you go. Part of my task here is to hopefully instruct you with some things that will prevent you from getting into bad situations in the first place to need to be released from. However, I know this is life. Shit's going to happen, but that don't mean we have to just go head first into bullshit. I had been working on this episode since last year, since before I moved to New York. But these episodes always come out, I feel, when God is ready for them to come out. Not when Devan and Serafino wants them to come out, but when the Holy Ghost wants them to come out. I was watching Supernatural on Netflix the other day. Yeah, I know Supernatural was old. They gave us 15 great, beautiful, sexy-ass seasons and glorious, too, I might add. Watching them two pretty-ass boys run around, it's giving me life. But I'm I'm going back and catching up on shows and things that I missed from that 10 year period. Like well, I was homeless before when I lived in Houston. And then it took like 10 years for me to like restabilize and come back to life. And I didn't have, have time to fuck around with television and shit like that. So I did not see things fully, you know, like orange is a new black supernatural and stuff and things of that nature. And so I'm like, thank God for streaming services. So I can go back and catch what I miss. And Supernatural is like my favorite show ever. You know, I'm all about the witchery and, and all of that and the casting out of the devils. And I mean, this shit is right up my alley. And so I'm going to read a quote from something one of the demons said in Supernatural. And, and, and when I heard her say this, I was like, I think it's time to release this show. The, the, the two guys on there who cast out the devils were had a demon in front of them and the devil told them this. The devil was saying, like, basically, humans are waist deep in food, booze, sex, and gambling, and I barely have to lift a finger to get them to destroy themselves. The demon continues that all you've got to do is nudge humans some whiskey here, a hooker there, 
and they'll walk right into hell with big fat smiles on their faces in the quote <laughs> from the <laughs> so I tell y'all all the time on this show, watch movies, shows for entertainment. Yes, there's, there's that aspect to it for sure. But please don't listen to music, watch shows and, and all these things and miss the life lessons that, that, that God is trying to teach you through these, these movies and shows. Because movies and shows are made from a lot of research, real life lived experiences, even some shows that seem super far out. There has to be some human element so that people can identify and relate or the show won't sell. So we can watch things and be entertained and have our titties tickled and all the things that we like. And that's all cool. But we need to learn some shit, too. So when the show turns off, sit down with your friends, family, lovers, loved ones and be like, what did you learn from this that we can actually apply to our life? Do you have to do it every time you watch a show? Probably not. But I mean, don't you want to get the most out of anything that you do in this life? And so when I watch Supernatural, I have my mental notebook out and I'd be taking notes when I heard this demon basically say the human race is doing a fine job of destroying itself. And the devils in this show were like, damn, they're doing better than we are at destroying people, <laughs> you know? And so, and so, and so I was like, let me, let me, let me just sit down and, and work on this show because the way the devil works it's the same way that, that I've warned you, like how witches work. They will, because they use Luciferian energy to do their dark magic. Like if the devil can get you to undo yourself, he really doesn't have much to do. So he will exploit your darkest parts, your weakest part, that, that inner child that you have, that you haven't worked on, that you're letting sit there and suffer. Your mental health issues you're not tending to, that you might be patching over with vices, like excessive travel sex, drugs, alcohol, e e drugs can even include hallucinogenics. You know, I, as I've gotten deeper into the psychonaut community, it's very sad that I have discovered there are some people who abuse psychedelics. And even though they're used for healing, they're, they're not, those people, or some people I've seen are not advancing internally. Okay. Which is a damn shame because there, there is power in plant medicine, period. And so Lucifer really deals like in fools gold he's going to try to sell you some shit that gives you a sensual sense of satisfaction on some type of level mental emotional physical but there there's no legs to it okay there's no like longevity to it it won't be there tomorrow so if we take like say the temptation of christ for instance when this when john the baptist baptized the lord then the holy ghost came down as dove on jesus God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then Jesus skipped on up the mountain, led up the spirit to be tempted of Billsy Bubs. And so when he was up there, you know, the devil offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world with one of the temptations. Now, why would the devil be willing to let go of all the kingdoms of the world to try to get Jesus to bow at his feet? Because the devil knows that the kingdoms of this world and all the riches and all the sex and all the money and all the gold and all the blah, 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 all the praise of humans is temporary. It's not going to last. What is permanent and lasting is the dynamics that we have with people, the relationships. So Lucifer was trying to get Jesus to change his, the dynamic of the relationship he had to him. He was trying to flip it so that that Jesus was not above Lucifer. He was trying to make Jesus be beneath Lucifer. And he offered him something that has no Latin, no eternal value anyway, which is everything in this world. That is what fool's gold is. It's shiny. It's pretty. It's sparkly. It'll excite you to look at, but ain't shit to it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's got some weight to it and everything like that, but you can't do nothing with it long term. It's like in the movies how the leprechauns fool people and then they give them this pot of gold. By the time they get out to the car, they realize it's nothing but really rocks. You know, and, and, and that fool's gold can be tricky. Like it'll give you like a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction today. Then it'll turn on you and bite you like a snake tomorrow. You know, I think about like when I was li living in, in Baton Rouge years ago and, and working at the Department of Veterans Affairs, 
the VA in New Orleans had this scandal happen where some people in human resources were stealing like hundreds of thousands of dollars and had gotten away with it until they got caught. And so that to me is like that Luciferian fool's go trickery. He let them, he caused them to lower their vibration enough to, to make it make sense in their heads that it's a good fucking idea to steal from the federal government. Not a little bit, but a lot of bit and then not stop. And, and then, you know, the FBI, whoever came there and hauled them off, and then that was the end of that. So what's the point of pleasure today, which is what Lucifer offered Jesus, if you're going to have pain and suffering for it tomorrow? So we got to, like, think through things. You know, Evangelist Nelson, my spiritual leader, the high clairvoyant, you know, would always say you got to look out before you step out. So we can't just go hop off into things, into people, into experiences, because the shit feels good. We got to examine the have the foresight and the depth of sight to understand the, the who, what, where, when, why, how, and, and will this still have value tomorrow? Or is this just a cheap thrill I'm settling for today? All right. Daniel chapter seven in, in the Hebrew Bible. And I always like to say the Hebrew Bible to remind the United States of America that the Bible does not belong to this country. <laughs> it did not come from this country. The United States doesn't have a monopoly on the Bible, even though they make so much money from the interpretation of scriptures and things like that, which I covered on a different show with my good friend, Barry Bowen, who is a uh, researcher and, and investigator for the Trinity Foundation over in Texas, who investigates preachers and, you know, looks into all those things. But, but, but Daniel 7 talks about how and he was talking about the Antichrist and how that the Antichrist will be given a mouth speaking great things. And when I read through this, I thought about how manipulative people who are infused with Luciferian energy lie. They say convincing things, say certain words that sound convincing and they can motivate a lot of people, but it's just not the truth. Be it Hitler, be it the, the damn narcissist you're married to, be it you know, some fucking manipulative ass child who won't act right or whatever the case may be. We have to be careful with not letting people's words influence us, influence us because there are words. I studied this in my hypnotherapy class and there are people in this world who actually teach classes about how to use words, tone of voice and things like that to control people. Hey, so some of these foolish people tried to recruit me into it. I tell them to go fuck off because I have no desire to work on a skill set to make people do what I want. If it's supposed to happen, it will happen. I will go to God and pray to get the things I want. I'm not about to resort to manipulations and chicanery and all of that stupid ass shit that people do. That's only going to bite them in the ass like a snake in the future. It's like Dune Part 2 just came out. I've been reading the Dune Chronicles and I'm further ahead in the books than the movies are. But you see how they use voice in Dune and when they speak in a certain tone, people act and they can't control. They have to get up and do it. If I say that, that things like that are like not like that exactly in real life, but that concept is real. If I walk into a room and I say a million dollars, everybody is going to get fucking excited on some level. There will be some sort of heightening of their senses or their emotions if I say a million dollars. If I say somebody died, I don't even know who it is. There's going to be a lowering of people's energy and emotions just on those words alone. And so if somebody knows how certain words will play on certain people, most people's emotions, a person can weave a tapestry to control you by saying certain things in tones of voices and certain words to manipulate you. If I want to, I can make an entire room more happy or more sad just because I know what words to say. In the military, when they were training me to march flights and squadrons and groups of people, it was all about the drill instructors who were kept drilling, you know, into me the importance of saying forward march to the rear march, right flank march, left flank march, about face or whatever the fuck the command would be with power and with authority. The point they were trying to make, if I don't say it with the right inflection in my voice, then there's a group of, of men over here ain't gonna listen to what the fuck I'm saying. 
okay, they're not gonna, this group of people over here not gonna listen to what the fuck I'm talking about. So, 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 so the warning here is to be careful about what the fuck you let people say to you and don't just do it because an emotion gets stirred up in you. Be level headed, be objective, keep yourself grounded and pay attention to who is talking to you, why they're talking to you. Now, I ain't saying be suspicious of everybody, but you kind of got to be a little bit suspicious of everybody until people prove to you why you should trust them. Okay. I was reading in um, the book of Zephaniah in chapter one, it says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore, their good shall become a booty and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses and not inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The message here is to be very, very careful about this idea <laughs> that God is this passive being who just just sets up <laughs> who, just, who just sets up in the heavenlies with nothing better to do than to shower good shit down on humans. Okay. God has in his personality, and I know this as I hang, I make it a point to hang out with the high trinity, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost all the time. All right. I got plenty of time to do it because I don't date. I'm not having sex right now. I'm like, my life is so like focused on self-improvement and sorting out my relationship with the divine. Like I, like I don't have enough time to tell you, I know God. Okay. Yeah, his personality is, is more wide and varied than ours. Okay. He has anger. He gets pissed off. He's nice and benevolent and everything in between. Okay. Don't let people tell you <laughs> that there is no judgment. Let people tell you <laughs> that God is not going to get angry at you and smite you. Yes, he will. <laughs> okay. He, he's going to repay to you your ways. Okay. Don't, don't sit there and think that because, you know, scriptures like this talk about how people think because judgment was delayed so long, it would never come. This is a trick of the devil because he makes you become complacent. Okay. Another thing they would warn us about in the military was be, being vigilant and not becoming complacent just because shit's been peaceful for a while. Don't mean it has to stay that way. You know, everything is subject to change. The only thing that's guaranteed is change. You could have a house today and be homeless tomorrow. You could have perfect health today and be struck with cancer or some shit tomorrow. You could have a sound mind today. And, and if you got it's up there and fuck, fuck with the wrong person, they could throw some witchcraft on your ass and cast you into a mental hospital by the end of the night. Okay, shit can change just that damn fast. Does it mean you run around and worry? No, it means you get your spiritual life sorted out <laughs> because you don't know what the fuck is going to happen. You know, sp having your soul right with God, having your understanding of the divine being formed is like spiritual insurance because you don't know what kind of spiritual trouble might come upon you. Okay, so this, so y'all got to get past this idea of going to work on spirituality one day or or whatever kind of like lazy ass way you might have been doing it. And you need to get serious about it because you, a part of you is soul and spirit and you must tend to those things. And you got to get past yoga, you know, and things like that. That's cute. Great place to start. But you need to understand who you worship and why. I understand that everybody's going to worship Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, like I do. I get that. But there are far too many YouTube videos and books out there and Amazon and this and that and teaching and blah, 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 blah. For people to be like vague about where they stand spiritually in this day and time. And I, and it just simply will not do. And it's time for people to move past that. And I'm very, very fucking happy to hear though, as I travel around the world, I'm hearing more people give me testimonies and accounts of like their own awakenings. People are like, God is starting to wake people up. And it's not just people who necessarily worship him per se, is people who have been searching for something and it's like it's coming to them, you know, in a spiritual aspect. I'm hearing it from men, women, and everything in between. I'm hearing a lot of formally toxic masculines that didn't pull their head out of their, out of their assholes and understand that 
you know, they actually get to be their own man and they don't have to do what every other fucking dude is doing. And that's okay. Congratulations, boys. I knew this day would come for you. I've been rooting for you. I've been fucking rooting for you. Like literally all I want is for dudes to like grow the fuck up, be men, have fun and do right. Thank God I'm hearing some, some, some testimonies from these, from, just from friends with guys I might come across, you know, at the gym or wherever. This chapter in Zephaniah 1 talks about, <laughs> oh my God, this is a situation you don't want to be in. This is like when, when, when God comes and searches, when he makes inquisition. See, God will give you space to do whatever the fuck you want. Go out cheap, be a hoe, work witchcraft against people, murder people, kill people, steal, whatever, or pray, do right, tell the truth, you know, meditate, open your heart to God, whatever. There's like a time. But then it's like God wakes up and then he flies down here, bends the clouds, as the scripture says, and enter, enters into judgment with people. If you've done good, you will receive good. If you've done bad, well, as they say in John Wick, by thine own hand, thy life is forfeit. It could be forfeited many different ways. So next, next, next point is the church. I believe... <laughs> And y'all know I don't go to church. I can't fucking stand the concept of church and organized religion. I am Team Trinity all the way. I hang out with angels, ancestors, ascended masters. I'm about all that. I am so fucking over church. It is like the most overglorified middleman ever. And anybody who's come up out the game or ever fucking even bought drugs, even if you were never a player, understands just how costly and expensive and taxing and unnecessary the goddamn shifty ass go between is. I don't care for preachers, pastors. I don't, you don't need all that. Okay. And what Lucifer has done is given people a, 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 an addiction to church, an addiction to preachers, an addiction to pastors, an addiction to the community of church. And slowly over time, it's like, God, I'm not saying this is everybody who fucking goes to church. But over time, for many people who do, it's like God slips from being the primary reason that they go to being peripheral. <laughs> okay. Because people are more excited about getting up, picking an outfit, seeing their friend, being on the program, participating in some shit in front of a camera, or whatever the case may be. And church has become like this social shit. Okay. And but back in the Bible days, people didn't fucking go to church every week. And certainly not no damn three, four times a week. People did not live in Jerusalem. They went up there like once a fucking year and they had church at home. <laughs> you know, they had church out in the fields and shit, you know, where God is, you know. Mm. I'm going to do a separate episode on this later, but I was in Guadalajara on the side of a mountain like eh, last week or the week before smoking Bufo Alvarez fucking frog poison with the shaman. And <laughs> And we were just out, I was sitting in a dry riverbed and man, I felt the Holy Ghost come through there and it felt like the churchiest church I'd ever had. And it was me and a shaman out in the woods. It felt pure. It felt like pure and it felt like God looked and sought us. Okay. Now it might sound hypocritical for me to say that I was with a shaman when I just threw so much shade at pastors and priests, but let me tell you, a shaman... <laughs> It's not a pastor. They're not a preach, and they damn sure not a pope. <laughs> a shaman is a completely different entity entirely, and they exist to help to shepherd and guide you into a personal relationship with the divine by yourself. The shamans, any good ones worth their fucking shit, are always about spiritual independence. You always hear me preach about <laughs> preach. Dare I say that word? Oh, fuck it, I haven't said it. You know, preach about spiritual independence. Know God for yourself. Read every fucking thing that you feel drawn to spiritually. Search it out. Go to God for yourself. Shit the church did, like, speaking against, against things which heal. Like, growing up Pentecostal, they would tell us no music, no dancing, no cussing, no this, no, 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 that. But, you know, there's healing in music. In shamanism, music and psychedelics go hand in glove. You have to have the music, the way it plays on the way the medicine works through you. It's healing and not the lyrics, the beats, everything. Plant medicine is strong. It has the power to break depression off of people, release people from drug addictions, 
I dare say sex addiction and things like that. If the person is willing to let it go, that medicine, God will reach through that medicine and come and yank that shit up out of you. <laughs> okay. And there's all kinds of plant medicines out there and things like that. Y'all seek that healing. Prescription medicine is cute. Sometimes we do need that to get us started, but it has been my experience. Plant medicine is solid. Psychedelics are solid. And in the church said, no drugs, no nothing, no nothing. Girl, come into your own personal relationship in the church because there's a scripture that talks about how we should come to a point where we have need that no man teach us. Okay, they don't preach this in churches that would be preaching themselves out of a job. Church is school, outgrow it, graduate, and go get by yourself with God. Maybe not in Guadalajara on the side of a mountain, but whatever isolation with the divine looks like to you. Okay, and we got to be careful about this anger against the church. This is another area where Lucifer will play in and make people anti-God. People like me who were kicked out of church for not being straight. Our friends who watch this happen can get a bitterness, you know, in us. Because, you know, God is actually good. It is the church that's bad. And that's why the devil doesn't really fuck with churches because he's not trying to mess up something that's driving people away from God. So. The devil uses the church to drive people away from God by the fucked up shit preachers say and do to people and by slowly making a God out of the community, the preacher and the church within people before people realize that it has happened. Okay. And I mean, and Lucifer is very masterful. I'm not praising him at all, but we got to know our enemy. This, this dude is smart. He's old as fuck. He's an ancient being and you cannot outsmart the devil. But what you can learn to identify the patterns and the tactics and then circumnavigate and pivot around them. Okay. It's probably an intentional thing of Lucifer to set up like popular preachers and things like that. And even ones in the local community and then cause those preachers to fall because he knows if he can get a preacher to fuck up half the damn congregation, if not all of them going to scatter get confused because they were worshiping the preacher and not God. That's why when these, some of these, these preachers fall, the whole congregation don't know what the fuck to do because they were there for the preacher. They weren't really there for God. <laughs> Maybe they came there for God, but they stayed for the preacher, you know, and after a while, that's what, that's what really what they're about. The preacher said this, oh God, I can't wait to hear the preacher this Sunday, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's damn near like, People, you hear less and less of God and more and more talk about the preacher. What's the next book they're going to write? What's the next song that's going to come from the fucking band? You know, and so on and so forth. Just be careful. And then what the devil will do is when, when we get pissed off at the church, then hop in us and make us go to all of these destructive devices and shit. That's what I did when I got kicked out of Lakewood Church for not being straight. Yeah, that was Joel and Victoria Osteen's doing because they commissioned this shit within their staff and in, within their ranks. Then I was like, well, fuck, I'm so hurt. So I'm going to go over here and start selling and doing all these drugs where I won't be judged. Well, that was the wrong direction. <laughs> you know, the church was too fucking restrictive, but them streets are too goddamn loose. You know, we need to be somewhere in the middle, you know, not too much, not too little. We, I'll talk about extremes later, but we can't be dancing in these extremes. Not too conservative, but not too damn fucking loose either. Because a lot of people have this live and let live. Do whatever you want. If it feels good, do it. I disagree. You need to take things before the Lord and see if he approves of it. And not, and not do everything because it just feels good. There's some people who I've heard say stupid shit like, like sex positive is like they think sex positivity is anything that's not like a rape or molestation of some sort and they think any fucking thing else they do with a with a consenting adult is fine girl no it's not <laughs> because like intentions and shit matter the spirituality around it matter i advise you to go see that sex blog that me and two other two, two shamans released over at the sex drugs and jesus website there are more dynamics to this life and I despise and stand against this oversimplification of indulgence and pleasure as long as it's not hurting other people, whatever the fuck you want to do. No, we still need parameters. We still need boundaries. I am a Sagittarius sun and a Scorpio ascendant. I'm wild as fuck. Okay, I understand extremes. I take shit there. Okay. 
without getting burned up because I can handle out there shit. If I'm saying you're doing too much, you're doing too much. Okay. Period. You have to learn to discern God's truth from the world's truth. And you have to get to a point by hanging out with God, reading scriptures, your prayers and meditations. That you can do this alone, like without needing somebody else to corroborate truth, because oftentimes you will have a group of people making bad decisions, being confederate in it and encouraging each other to do stupid shit. I think about Dathan when Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and Dathan the shade thrower of his day, righteous people, light workers, you know what I'm talking about. As the scripture says, every time we go to do good, there's evil present. Whether it's the, the, the petty basic bitch next door, the dumbass person you, you, you run into in the store, there's always going to be some fucking thorn in our side, if you want to call it that. I really look at them as like gnats flying around. They're like paper tigers. They don't have any fucking power. They can't do shit. They just like to be fucking annoying. But Dathan tried to get people together to fight Moses and they wanted to go back to Egypt and the ground opened up and it swallowed them up because God wasn't having it. You know, but my point is all those people got together and thought it would be a good idea to battle the person who God just used to part the Red Sea. Or, or they were getting ready to go across it. I don't fucking remember, but enough miracles had been done from hail and fire coming down and locusts and flies. Clearly the man was touched. Why would you fight somebody whose whose hand is strong? God's hand is strong with like that. And what I'm, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that all of those people decided to do that and they were all wrong. I think about the crucifixion. All of those people decided to crucify Jesus and it was not until he was dead and then God turned the sky black and it was an earthquake and the veil in the temple was written, all of that. The Bible says they smote their chest and they went home sorrowful. But until God spoke, all of those people were telling each other, yeah, it's a good idea. Let's kill this person. Let's let the criminals go. They use the word criminals non-judgmentally, just how they were described. Y'all know I got like four felonies myself. It is what it is. I did what I did. And so, <laughs> but my whole point is they all thought what they were doing were right, but it wasn't. And there wasn't anybody there telling them to do different. And there's a very short scripture that talk about that. But you know, God has the power to fight people in their consciousness. <laughs> and like, and he can get in your mind, you know, and you can't escape God if he get on your case. There's no where you can go. There's no witch you can go to. There's no spell you can cast. If God decides that, that, that what you did wasn't right, then like it says, of these people crucified the Lord, they smoke their chest in the Hebrew culture. That, that's a sign of like deep sorrow and grief. Okay. That followed them home, probably was in their dreams. They probably plagued them for days. They may not, not have had peace maybe till they heard the Lord had risen, even at that. It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of the Lord and none can deliver you out of his hands. Confederate bad thinking. Where else do we see this complaining? In an, in an upcoming book that I'll write, it's talking about my transition from Baton Rouge to New York. Child. The living situations I had to be in, like in the shelters and things like there, up there brought me around men who complain like a mother and a fucker. I couldn't believe all of these straight dudes <laughs> bitch about everything. The food's too hot. The food's too cold. It's not enough. The bed's hot. Girl, <laughs> every damn day, it was a new gripe, a new bitch, a new moan. But in Psalms 144 and Verse 13 through 15, it says that our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yeah, happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Watch your mouth. Y'all know I adamantly stand against venting because it's, it's very easy to cross over from venting, whatever the fuck people would want to do that for, and, and be just become a complainer. A person can come to me if they want a fucking solution. <laughs> okay. But we not about to sit around 
And even if they don't want a solution, then they need to at least be able to tell me the benefit or whatever this bad thing that they just can't let go of. And they just have to say, you know, what was the benefit? Because we know everything happens for us, not to us. If you choose to find the silver lining, can't nobody come to me just with darkness because there's positivity even in the darkest of nights. Okay. Now, if you can't see it, we got to work on that. Okay. Because, because th that there be no complaining. All of these men that I were around complaining, I was the only voice in the room saying, why don't we find something to be thankful for? We're standing up. We're talking. You have a mouth that works that you're using the fucking bitch and gripe and complain. We have a roof over our head. The food might not be lobster and caviar, but they were too basic to even eat such things. I don't, you know, you know, the food might not be whatever they would classify as the best, but it's food. We have running water, hot water. You know, there's people bringing us things, you know, it was a choice that they made. My caution to you is to not let Lucifer get you caught up with a bunch of people who ain't got no better sense than the next fucking person standing next to them. There is a lot of weakness in this group dynamic where people encourage the worst of behaviors from each other. You need to surround yourself with people who challenge you to be your best, who don't accept your bullshit. Okay? Be very, very careful about that. Hmm. <laughs> I think about Grinder when I think about this. Grinder, Tinder, Bumble, all of those damn apps. You know, I don't fuck with apps anymore. I mean, the over-sexualization of this world is just distasteful and it and it turns me off to the point that, you know, I just even much want to fucking touch people because people just have to make everything about sex. Yeah, we're sexual, but there comes a point where it's just like too much. <laughs> okay. I, I had tried to be on fucking the Bumble Friends app for like a hot sec, half a second. And then people on there were, it says a BFF, friends, people on there were trying to have sex. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's fucking hell. You know, I was like, girl, bye. You know, you just can't, be, can't have any damn thing because, you know. <laughs> and so, but the internal thought processes, people get on these apps with sexual intentions, not positive sexual intentions now trying to be energy vampires, seeking validation rather than going to contribute to a loving union between two or more people. By being on those apps, you sign on to that energy. Again, go see that sex blog over at our website. We talk about this. And I have warned people about that creepy ass grinder mask before. I tried, I looked up that mask years ago to see what the fuck that thing meant. A lie was posted about it. That thing reminds me of like, old school witchcraft i mean old you know witchcraft and mask and things like that that i used to see back in the 80s i mean old school like from certain other countries that i won't mention you know you know that type of shit i ain't saying that it is or isn't but that thing even when i used to use grinder always gave me the creeps but if a spell was cast to make Grinder profitable, it's not impossible. People do that. I'm not saying they did or didn't. Okay. But somebody who deal, like I work so much with, with this sort of stuff, you know, it stands out to me. I'm looking at this mask like if somebody were to just hypothetically have cast, you know, magic to make Grinder prosperous and people will do this to, to I mean, they'll do rituals to, to bring, bring people to church. There's a ritual you can do using human bones. People might sacrifice people. You can sacrifice their lives physically. You can sacrifice people's happiness, their joy, their call, and throw people off track of their divine destiny. There's all kinds of ways to sacrifice people to get demonic forces to do things for you. How do I know this? Because I make it my business to, to study what the enemy is doing. I don't practice demonology, but I study certain things, okay? And so from churches to businesses to apps, it might be hard work and good old elbow grease and savvy marketing, or it could be Bill's bugs, <laughs> you know, helping them to have this prosperity. Like when Lucifer offered Jesus all the kingdoms in the world, the devil can make people rich. Okay. Because they don't want to wait on God. I ain't saying Grinder did this, but I'm saying that damn mass is creepy as fuck. And there's something more to it. They could have chosen any fucking logo in the world. 
and a spell caster could have cast that spell and every time somebody logs on to that app it could be like sacrificing a certain portion of people's whatever to feed strength and energy into that app or it could be reinforcing the original spell that was cast it's like that thing is has like a certain sort of life to it it's like it, it doesn't really feel dead to me like it's just an icon and so do with that what you will i thought i would throw that out there yet again and but if you, if you i mean people are going to do what they're going to do but be question people inquire what's happening within people you know who are you why are you what drives you i know people just want to go have their experiences with people and think that's that with people's the entities and the beings and the energies that, that are on people follow you out of the sex you have with them you know it follows you away from the conversations you have with them i mean that's not a conversation depends on what you're talking about it's not going to be as involved as a penis in a hole but I mean, you just really 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 need to know people and too many people are willing to run off with people that they don't know <laughs> you know stop that it's stupid and it's dangerous so it's, you should not do this thing and you need to be willing to cut people off okay so you've been in these groups and you're afraid to get away from them community is another thing lucifer uses to keep people in bondage since I stopped drinking back in January when the Lord flipped the switch and delivered me from crack, crystal meth, cocaine, and alcohol in one fell swoop, haven't had a fucking craving since for any of it. And people come up to me now saying, saying things like they want to stop drinking as they have a drink in their hand. And what they're afraid of is something I had to process through is what would my social life look like if I stopped this? Let me let you understand that's a very valid concern and you always want to replace one thing with another this is true first of all there's a huge community of people who don't drink most places now offer non-alcoholic things i recommend microdosing various psychedelics when you go out microdosing psilocybin maybe lsd or mdma i mean small doses i mean honestly it makes me feel better than what i used to feel when i was tipsy i'm getting a you know, a little inner child work done subconsciously and to some degree consciously while I'm out and there's, it is totally fucking fine to the extent that I'm all like, I wonder what the fuck I even drank for, you know, and, and what was I concerned about community? People should accept you whether you drink or not. It is your body, your choice. You put in it what the fuck you want. And if somebody is levying on you some sort of demand for you to be cool by consumption of drugs or alcohol, then fuck them. You don't need the bitch anyway. Have your sword ready always to cut motherfuckers off. Do not get caught up in this oppression of the community. You be yourself. Your obligation is to the divine first to, to fulfill your soul's purpose to yourself and then other motherfucking people. Okay? Fuck people. You know, and what they think. You, because see, if you keep drinking and or you, you get like sick and shit like that, okay, the people who, who you tried to get to accept you are not going to be the ones sitting with you in the hospital. Okay. The motherfucking people go. Them fair weather ass frenemies. Girl, bye. Yeah. In fact, that's a good litmus test. Stop drinking and see who still wants to want you to come around. That's a good way to weed out bullshit ass motherfucking people. Psalms 52 verse 5 through 7 says, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Mind how the fuck you use your strength. Because the devil will play with your pride and your ego and make you think that anything that makes you feel strong and capable and abundant and over the top is righteous with their scriptures that talk about how people's might is not right, even though they have might, and God is not pleased with these people. Verse six here is that little scripture that talks about how how the righteous we have a little bit of space to laugh at the stupid fucking shit people who don't obey God do, especially when we warn their dumbasses and they go out there and get gobbled up by some bullshit anyway. I ain't so much for the I told you so's, but you know, to myself, you know, scriptures like this justify me having a little bit of a, <laughs> just a little chuckle. <laughs> you know, when I watch people's 
you know, lightning fall on people, you know, and, and like their, their drastic fucking karma catch up with them. I get to have a little bit of a laugh. I'm not ever going to say anything to them, but just a little bit of a, mm -hmm. <laughs> just a little bit, but then I got to keep moving on about my business. I ain't got time to be looking at the motherfuckers. God is dealing with them and moving forward. Just a little smidgen's worth. Because see, <laughs> Like I said earlier, God gives you strength and he's watching to see what you choose to do with it. <laughs> and if scriptures like this talk about how when God gets done with your ass, he can snatch you, he can take away the things he's given you, you know, like your houses and your car. You don't have to have anything. Like it is subject to change. Don't think, don't let the devil trick you into thinking that because you are stable and you have things that you always have to, even if you have the things, God can smite your health and take it away. Take your health away, then you won't have the mind or the body to physically enjoy the thing. So be very careful the attitude with which you approach this life. How are you using your strength? What do you really trust in? I hear people say things that like they they believe that they are God. Okay, we have God within us, but we are not God. Okay. I fundamentally disagree with that because if if you are a god or a goddess or whatever the fuck you want to be, how is there any more room for a growth? And then how is there any room for you to be totally dependent on God or the divine as you understand that? I understand we're co-creators with God, but that does not make me God. That makes God humble enough to want to deal with, with a human like me, even though I possess a lot of angelic qualities and I roll, you know, and walk with very strong angels. And they're all strong and beautiful to me. You know, I am I would call myself an angel, an ascended master, a celestial, but I am not God. To me, there needs to be a division, okay, in between who's running shit and who is it. And I don't, and, and I think some ego, more ego death is needed in people, in my opinion, who feel like they are God. You know, why, why is not being like an angel or a celestial being enough? Why do you have to be God too? You know, I don't, I don't like that. I don't agree with it. I have friends that are like that. I'm not judging them for it, but you know, I've told them like, I'm glad for being an angel. <laughs> I mean, have you, I mean, I have seen in the spirit, the way angels work, they're powerful, they're fast and they're strong as fuck. Okay. I'm good with that level of strength. Okay. I need to be God. I'd rather lean and depend on God. That is my greatest power is at the feet of Jesus. You can't nobody defeat you if you're really dependent on the Lord. But if you're dependent on yourself, then your foundation is not as stable as you think it is. And, and by getting, getting back to con Confederate bullshit, and this is, this is a really big one because you see like groups of friends that are toxic, groups of families that are toxic and dumb and stupid and saying the most foolish things to one another. And it's like nobody in the whole group has any goddamn common sense. But somebody listening to this might be that black sheep in the group of friends or the family or might want to break away from some lovers. Girl, you better go. Boy, you better flee. Do not... <laughs> Stay with people of any kind of relationship dynamic for the sake of staying with people. You must search your own truth and follow your truth and make sure it is in line with righteousness. When people do things, do sexual things On some type of level, like I said earlier, some people think anything that's not rape or molestation is okay. I was reminded as I was contemplating this episode when I was in fuck middle school, had the substitute teacher, the fun substitute teacher who you like wished was like your teacher the whole time, but only showed up to grace you with her presence and then disappear. And just, you just was like, fuck, I wish that was my teacher. Like all the time, she was so fucking cool was telling us how she walked downstairs in her apartment and was like this, I don't know, 20-person straight orgy happening at the pool. And it's like nobody out of all 20 of those guys and gals thought maybe we should have this orgy in one of our houses, an apartment. Now we're going to go to this public pool 
in the middle of this apartment complex to do this orgy at five, six, seven in the morning when people are getting up to go to work. Maybe they wanted to be caught. I have enough sense to know that sex addicts don't care for boundaries and parameters and they like to try to get caught in the danger of barely getting away, which is a sick mind. It just fucking is. And but nobody said, hey, maybe this isn't a bad, maybe this is a bad idea. <laughs> okay. I canceled my membership at the gym I was attending in New York. This is another thing I'll talk about more in my book, because this shit was so fucking unreal. Because I was in the uh, steam room at this gym in Midtown in Manhattan at like 8 p.m. on a Friday. Okay, this like gay orgy broke out, and I was like, not today, Satan. I mean, it's not going to happen like this. Okay, I'm not on Grindr, I'm not on Scruff, Jack, none of the apps. I don't know if this shit was cool. I'd, I don't, I think this might just happen all the time there because the staff didn't seem to be surprised. I didn't go run snitch. <laughs> okay. I'm sitting there. Had a great workout. I like to, I like to go into a sauna or a steam room or something and, and sweat more. Cause after I run on a treadmill or do floor aerobics, I like to keep that body heat up and take advantage of the detox because my body sweats a lot and Holds a lot of water, but we release a lot of water. And so I need like another hour in a steam room or a sauna after a workout to really complete my routine. So I'm sitting in this steam room at this gym, marinating, honey, you know, getting my fucking life. And, and people are sitting there with their towels, as you do. And this one guy comes in and stands in front of like the hot rocks and takes his towel completely off. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this one here, I'll be coming to the gym a while. And. I guess he's really fucking comfortable. Well, then he hops, you know, walks right over to this other guy, starts sucking dick. And then the, the whole daisy chain dick sucking thing starts. And it's like maybe seven guys in this steam room. I'm the only one clutching their pearls going like WTF. What the fuck is happening right now? I just came here to work out in the steam room. I'm not trying to have sex with strangers in a public family gym. <laughs> okay. And so I got up and left. Okay. I came back the next day because I don't like to let people's negativity and the stupid shit they do take me away from things that I enjoy. So I would try to find another way to come at it from a different angle before I throw the whole thing away if I can. But it was the same bullshit the next day. And so that's what makes me feel like the staff knows and... <laughs> Look, I had overlooked the one or two little sex addicts running around in there, clearly with like a hard on under their towel. I was like, look at this little pathetic thing here. Boy needs to go work on himself. Brown here chasing dick in a gym. But, you know, I say that with no judgment. It just is what it is. But, <laughs> but then when this happened, then I understood. And this is not like a 24 hour gym. This was not like three in the morning at some gym. Not that that would be justified anyway, because there's places in New York, there's bathhouses that people want to go have a gay orgy. They can go fucking have a gay orgy. That's what, that's, what, that's what they do. But sex addicts don't want to do things where it's supposed to happen. They want to do shit, sexual shit, where it's not supposed to happen. And that helps to feed their sick moms. And half of them boys, then the problem, they're cheating on their husbands and boyfriends. Then go, go home. It's shit. Probably girlfriends and wives, too. I say gay orgy, but I don't fucking actually know everybody's true full orientation. I didn't stay to meet motherfuckers and say, hey, and shit. I was peace out. Like, I, my, I, my name ain't Bennett. I ain't in it. I don't want to be seen here. I don't want to be around this energy. I do not accept this energy. I leave. Because if you, if an orgy breaks out on you in the steam room, <laughs> and you stay there after a while, at a very brief while, there's like a sort of implied consent that you sign on to. Now, whether you're going to be a voyeur or whatever the fuck, but if somebody reaches out and touches you when you have a full understanding of what's happening, okay, you, 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 you can read the tea leaves if you need to. But again, nobody in there was like, this isn't a fucking good idea. Maybe we should not do this. <laughs> so. And, and like, I, like I was saying, those people were in there probably cheating on their significant others and going to go home and say some shit like, 
their their partner's going to ask them, you know, hey, how was your workout? They're going to say, great. You know, it was really intense, but they won't say that they had uh, you know, an orgy in the fucking steam room. That's how, that's how those sex addicts do. They kind of answer the question, but they leave out <laughs> the pertinent details and kind of like laugh under their breath because they feel like they're getting away with something. But as the scripture was saying, <laughs> you know, here in Psalm 52, God sees everything. And God is not mocked. Whatsoever we sow, that will we reap. So do not let Lucifer trick you into thinking that you're going to get away with shit that you do. Then do not let him trick you into surrounding yourself with people who corroborate things you should not be doing. <laughs> okay? Get over your addictions. Get past them. Get healed. There's plenty of plant medicine and medicines and rituals and retreats and psych psychiatric counseling that to help you with whatever problem you have in this day and time with the advancement of technology for somebody to stay bound in whatever the fuck has them bound in my opinion is a conscious choice there's shit that's free there's shit you don't have to pay for there's people who will set with you through psychedelic things if you can't make it to mexico for to, to be with a shaman there are options if a person wants to be free they used to sing the song in church growing up that said, I don't have to be bound. You don't have to be bound. You don't want to be. You don't have to be. You don't have to be bound. But people get comfortable <laughs> with their addictions and that darkness. And like I said, when you do get ready to get away from it, it's not just going to let you go. You know, people who you're trying to stop sleeping with and doing drugs with or murdering people with or whatever going to call you, they're going to follow you. That energy is going to chase you in some type of physically manifested way. Of course, it'll come across your mind and everything like that. But you've been in that. You're going to have to fight to come out of it, but you have to. This sort of behavior here is fucking unacceptable. The problem I have with it is that it's this, this, that, that, that bad ideas, be it asexual or other, are prevalent in groups of people. And I'm like, where the fuck are the wise people in this group? I suppose I don't blame wise people wanting to get the fuck away from people who do dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose that there's that aspect too. False family is the next thing that I, which is kind of like in line with this false group of this false Confederate thinking. So people get hurt. Like I told you, I was hurt by the church. I went, ran to the game. So be careful of getting involved in games, drug games, crime games. Sex games, you know, there's groups of people that it, that form a family around the sex they have with each other. <laughs> okay, let me just tell you, be it a loving relationship or friends or whatever, you cannot, sex is not a foundation something's supposed to be built on people. <laughs> Do not let the devil trick you into thinking because sex feels good, you can build a life of any substance off of it with somebody you can't. Sex is supposed to be the result of honesty, respect, and mutual spirituality and, and all kinds of juicy, delicious things between people. It can't be how you start some shit. One of the shamans who I collaborated on the blog on my website with, there's a quote from Mexico that goes something like, if something starts with sex or because of sex, it will end because of sex or something like that. It's not wise. It just ain't wise. So be careful. Because we are community-based beings, so we will seek a tribe. I didn't know this when I got kicked out of church. What I did was I tribe swapped. I went from the church over to the trap house. Okay. I wish I had stopped. I mean, I say I wish I had. I'm, had, I'm, glad, I'm glad everything went the same way. A wiser choice would have been to stop somewhere in the middle of the church and the trap house and find a balanced group of people. Okay. I could have gone, if I just insisted upon staying in church, I could have found a Unitarian church, a Unity church. I could have found a group of psychedelic spiritual people or something, anything other than going to set up in a meth house. <laughs> so, when I say anything, but you get my fucking point. That's all I'm going to say on that. Be sure, whatever sort of chosen family you have, whatever sort of tribe you have, that there's people in there who actually love you, who will tell you the truth, even if you don't want to hear it, and they're working on their own self-improvement as well. You also have to tell them it's okay for them to check you and challenge you, and they have to be open to that too. Okay, and if you want to be something different or do something different, that should be supported. If anything don't feel right, exit.
and get familiar with the word excommunicado. Cut a bitch off if you need to. Maintain your peace and establish your boundaries. I want to talk about another one of Lucifer's devices, which I recently discovered, which is dance floor magic. Dance floor witchery. So I was at a club in New York. Not many nights passed on certain psychedelics and shit like that, which is like I've, like I've explained, the way the music deals with you when you're on psychedelics is be very healing. Even if I'm on a dance floor, I will let tears fall from my eyes if the DJ plays a note that strikes me a certain way or lyrics that strike me a certain way and let my inner child have that touch that, that he needs, even though I feel like he's all healed and better. Or maybe he wants to have an emotional moment. I let him have that, you know. And on this particular night, I felt like a fiddle in the DJ's hand and everything that this, 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 this being was playing, it was like I was just being moved one you know, to the left or to the right one way or the other by this DJ on the influence of this psychedelic. And so an individual at some point in the night, I saw him like bump into another individual for a moment. It looked like they didn't know each other. And I don't care. It's the interesting thing about psychedelics. I care how high I get on them. And I've been fucking high on psychedelics. It's always like, I always have like one foot on the ground still. I'm never completely gone. I still know what the fuck's happening. If I need to run, I can run. If I need to fight, which I don't like to fight, but if it came down to it, like I'm not, it's not like that. You know, I'm still aware, even though I'm definitely in my experience. And so I saw this, these two people bumping each other. And then they started doing this like, dance and I immediately recognized it as co cooperative magic because it wasn't just like a dance you would do to rave techno house bass music it, it 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 was it was too fluid it flowed like a uh, ritual magic and they were coordinated with each other which is fine if that's what they want to do but the problem I had was when one of them walked over to me and made physical contact with me. Okay. <laughs> I don't like people touching me. Like a person should not just walk up to Devan and Serafino and touch me. Doesn't work that way. You start with, hi, my name is. <laughs> but then we go from there. <laughs> you don't just like invite your body to be upon me like that. And so until this person came over and tried to cast like this spell or whatever, blowing his breath over, over on me, or over me, whatever the fuck, and trying to touch me and shit a certain way. And I just kind of like laugh because I could, I understood what they were trying to do. And, and I'm, I was in a very sexual mood, but I'm not having sex right now. I'm going, I, I'm going to school later on in the year to learn sexual alchemy and shamanism. And I haven't had sex since I can't remember. And I'm not going to change that. And so, and when I do, it's going to probably hopefully be with my future husband, or if not, it'll be with some fucking highly vibrational spiritual person and no fucking basic bitch off of an app or some fool from a club who just thinks I'm going to go home with them. No, but if I'm feeling sexual on my psychedelics, that's me and my experience. I don't require <laughs> a man for that. I'm happy by myself. This fool comes over there and, and does all that. I just kind of like laugh. And his little spell just kind of like deflected off of me because of, of my own practices is not going to work on me. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is for people who are not guarded and strengthened in the Lord and they don't know who they are and their divinity, shit like that can work on you. Especially if you're the type who likes to go out and get high and go to the club as you should. If you can control yourself and be balanced, it's fucking fun. And and, and we ain't fucking with nobody. We just dance and go home. We have a little weed, go fuck sleep. And so, the, but though it's probably eight in the morning before I get home. But, so be careful of that. This, don't let people just, be careful who you let just come up and touch you and breathe on you and shit like that and pay attention to how they move and shit like that. Because what, I, what they, I think, were trying to do was trying to I mean, they were trying to like have some type of like sexual thing with me or whatever. And I absolutely refused to do that. I withdrew my energy and did a couple of other things, but to make it very damn clear, hell no, <laughs> I came out to dance, not to meet a dude. 
I'm going fucking home by myself like I came by myself. And that's all that there is to it. I ain't saying go out and worry and shit like that, but watch your drinks. Watch, you know, we just watch it and just be careful whose energy you accept. Pay attention to how you feel. If you get like creepy ass tingles or chills or different things like that, don't be so foolish as to think everybody's your friend at a club or that everybody has your best interest in mind or that there's people who, who won't manipulate certain forces to try to get what they want. Because people who are heavy into witchcraft, that when if there was no other confirmation that I needed, the DJ played a song that the lyrics were literally like, she's a witch. And, and these two people got very fucking excited when that came on. So I was like, okay, thank you God for that confirmation. But by then I was, as they were trying to dance closer to me, I pivoted away. <laughs> I kept rejecting their energy. I kept rejecting it. I kept rejecting it. But there are people who just feel like the only damn way for them to get people or their preferred way is by force, by magical force. They can't just come and and be like, hi, my name is such and such and risk rejection. They're like, fuck it. I want this person. I'm just going to go take them through magical force. That's it. Girl, bye. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, it can work. So, so just be careful. Have fun, but pay attention to people's vibrations and don't let nobody just handle you any kind of way like that. Let me shift gears here. I, I just spend a lot of time talking about magic and sex because those two things are so fucking prevalent in society. The, the sex is every damn where, but it's not being used in the best way that it can. I don't dare say it's not being used right. Okay. The right meaning with the right intentions for the other person in mind going to contribute more so than to get and to honor the divine through the sexual union. And, and magic is just fucking everywhere. It just is. Damn near every city I travel to in the world has magic shops, tarot shops, witchcraft. You can order shit online. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And people do magic subconsciously anyway. And so that's why I talk about sex and magic a lot, a lot, a lot. Lately, that's been coming up. And I meet so many people who've been victims of sex, magic, or some sort of shit. And it's just like, fuck, fucking hell, Harry. And so anyway... Don't argue over the blessings that God gives you, like houses, jobs, and cars. Have you ever seen people, God and bless them with a house or whatever the fuck, want to fight over the lawn, bitching about how the neighbor's lawn looks? Okay. <laughs> Don't let the devil, and, and, and homeowners associations are notoriously wicked for this too, enforcing this snitch policy and trying to, correct shit that is petty as fuck okay what we should do is be thankful that we have eyes to see grass at all to hear the wind blow walk on our own two feet let us not use our strength as we were talking about earlier be sure that your might is right to complain about the blessings god has given us let us be thankful we have houses we own lands rather than complaining about what the person's doing next door girl <laughs> okay, I have seen some churchy ass church going people come damn near come to blows over lawn care. Girl, don't we have better shit to worry about than how trim the grass is <laughs> to the extent that is you you like reporting people to the city and shit. I mean, girl, girl. <laughs> Let so let's just get our perspective back and remember where we came from. Back when we didn't have a house and we didn't have lands and we didn't have this and didn't have that. Who gives a fuck if it's necessarily as pretty as it could be all the time? We've got more going right on that property still than what's going bad. But people who seek problems will find them. But those problems exist in their mind. So just be sure that you're not one of those people. When God gives you something, lay it at his feet, your house, your children your jobs, your money, your income, your ministry, your body, your sex life, every fucking thing belongs to God. And when you do that, you will have peace you've never known before with all things. But let's get rid of this strife. Like I said earlier, let there be no complaining in our streets. Don't complain about what you have. Don't complain about what you see somebody else doing. Worry about you. Deal with you. The next point I want to talk about are the miracles of Egypt. 
Okay. So remember when God got ready to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, we had the frogs, the locusts, I think flies, the water being turned into blood, the death of the firstborn, the cattle, all of that, the fire, the hell mixed with fire. The interesting thing about that story is that the magicians, the witches, the warlocks in Egypt could also say, turn a staff into a snake. Maybe you don't believe it literally happened. Quite frankly, it doesn't fucking matter. The point is of that story is that the devil tends to mimic God and he has a certain ability to copy certain shit. And so Moses staff turned into a snake. He turned water into blood. So did Pharaoh's magicians. There came a point though that Pharaoh's magicians could not keep up with the miracles of God. They just couldn't, I think, like make the gnats disappear or the boils disappear and go away because he smelled them with boils on their skin too. So my point is be careful about who is providing power to people who do spiritual work on your behalf. I would do a separate show on low vibrational petty clairvoyance. It is a shame that some people are spiritually inclined. They're using their gifts to channel uh, Luciferian energy and demonic forces to try to, to destroy people. They do unfortunately succeed with that at times or to, to move people like out of their place and just be careful. So if you're going to go online or go to somebody who was referred to you to do some sort of work on your behalf, because I guess you don't want to do the spiritual work yourself. Some people live with certain people and they can't, I get that, but question them. Who are they getting their power for? Who do they pray to? I make it very clear. I pray to God, Yahweh, God of the Hebrews, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. I pray to no other beings. I don't pray to angels. I work alongside angels. They're my fellow servants. As the angels say in the scripture, worship God. I don't worship angels. I don't worship ancestors. I don't worship anyone except God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. What I'm trying to get you to understand is before you go and hire people, before you go get a tarot reading or whatever, know where these people are getting their power from. Because Lucifer will feed you lies through low vibrational clairvoyant people. He will exploit your insecurities and shit through low vibrational people, clairvoyant, spiritually inclined people. And about the worst thing that could happen is while you're sitting there with your energy open to a low vibrational spiritual person, that person can curse you and you don't know. Especially if you're dumb enough to try to go get somebody hexed <laughs> or try to cast spells against people. Okay, if that person is low vibrational enough to do that for you, they'll curse you too. It's like being a drug dealer. If, if I'm hanging out with a hustler who, who I could send to go kill somebody or rob somebody, not saying I did that. I may or may not have seen these things happen though. That same hustler will turn around and kill the person who sent them too because they're a killer. That's just what they do. And so, don't be silly enough to think that this this evil as witch is your friend. They're not. They belong to and have to work for the devil. Then, then people make all kind of packs and deals and shit. And to in their light, to, to a degree, their life really in their own. When the devil demands payment of them for whatever they sac sacrificed or done, they have to do it. Okay, but that's their choice. They they enter into like leagues and agreements with Lucifer. But just be careful. Ask people who the fuck they're getting their power from. And if you're okay with it, then you're okay with it. But there's a lot of deities that people pray to. There's a lot of different beings and shit out there. When I do shamanic work in Mexico, I tell them we will not be calling upon Kali today or Buddha or Ganesh or any damn body. I ain't, I'm not throwing no tea or no shade at those beings. I don't know those beings. So I don't fuck with them like that. I talk to God. So I make it clear that for my ceremonies, this is who and we're going to talk to. Most of them believe that God, Ganesh, Kali is a different way of saying the same thing. I've heard some people, not necessarily shamans, say that they don't believe Kali or say Ganesh are real beings, their energies, whatever. Everybody's got their own thing. What I'm trying to get you to understand is you need to be sure who is powering who the fuck you're talking to. And don't be so desperate for an answer. Or to work some kind of spell against somebody, which ain't going to work because there's a scripture that says that an undeserved curse will have its desired effect. So if you're dealing with somebody who's close to God, who knows that scripture and believes it, 
all, whatever kind of spell you cast and it won't work, it can't because God has allowed everything to happen. But as the scripture says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Okay. People going to gather together. They're going to try to fight us, but they're going to fall because it was not of God in the first place. So just mind who you go into. I encourage you always to go to God for yourself and to learn. That's why when I teach my candle magic, which I'll be doing another one of those again soon, I apologize for the delay on that, but this move to New York had your girl busy with other things, but I got, I got to come and I will give you, uh, my goal is 10 candle le lessons available that will be available on my website. My goal is to teach you how to do a spiritual work for yourself. Okay. Yeah. There might be times you need higher, high magic assistance from somebody who's more capable than you, but the default, in my opinion, shouldn't be to go run to some other person. You'll waste money that way. You're putting your soul in somebody's hand. You might not barely even fucking know. I mean, just be careful with that as the devil will attack you through these people. It's a very subtle thing. And if you're not sensitive, you don't even know what's happening. But once you open yourself up to somebody and they, you're open to them, just like when you have sex with somebody, you're open to them and spiritual workers might, you might, they might ask you like, do I have permission to enter your energy? That's not a light question. You're dang giving them access to everything that you are. Isaiah chapter 17, verses 12 through 14 says, Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. <laughs> and behold, at evening tide trouble and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and a lot of them that rob us. This is echoing what I just told you. And I know it's repetitive, but I'm saying these scriptures God gave me because that's what I'm commanded to do. And some, some of y'all are so hard headed. You have to have things told to you about 50 million times before it'll sink in and it just is what it is. And I, I mean, it just is what it is. These people, it says this, this destruction that this scripture is talking about in Isaiah 17 is about people who had power to spoil people, to rob people, to take advantage of people, to cheat on people, to lie to people. <laughs> but this, this scripture is talking about the removing of these people, either physically from this plane of existence or some type of destruction that renders them as though they were not. So... You got to get close enough to God to learn discernment and judgment. Okay. Even if you have to start trying to get to know God while you're yet entrapped in the vices that have had, had you bound for so long. Okay. I, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but God deals in subtleties. And like I said, Lucifer mimics God. Be careful who you're around. Get, get started reaching for God, even though you yet have problems. One of Lucifer's devices is to make you think that you're not worthy to go to God, that you have to wait until you have it all perfect or all together or whatever to get off the drugs, to stop being a whore, to stop being a sex addict, to stop fuck even murdering people or molesting children or whatever the case may be. You better pray when it comes into your mind to pray because you need the Lord to help you break out of that stronghold. So you don't have to have it all together. Start where you're at and go from there. And as I stated earlier, Lucifer deals in extremes. Like the church is too fucking conservative, but the streets are too fucking loose. Why Lucifer likes to deal in extremes? It's because when we have emotional spikes, we are in a state of what, what, hypnotherapists call hypnosis or a state of hyper suggestibility, which means your ass is not thinking straight and that you are very impressionable if your emotions are aroused, aroused up and stirred up. Aroused was not the best word for that. Okay. Your intense feelings and emotions are very blinding, but we want to be not either too much nor too little. When I think about extremes, think about the way people use sex. Yes, I'm coming back to sex again, be it all of these sexual positions. Some people, have you ever had sex with somebody? 
it seems like they were more interested in trying 50 million positions. I'm not talking about somebody you've known forever and have a bond with. It's like they're more interested in the experience than they are in you. They want all these positions or they want to do chem sex with all these substances. And I'm not saying that any of this is bad, but just be cautious of intensity rather than intimacy when it comes to sex, because it can be a distracting thing. Sex is supposed to start off as a sweet, loving thing between however many people and grow into all this extreme kink because you have to have that foundation because when we want to swing from the chandeliers and break out the leather, the whips and chains and all of that, feather, blah, 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 blah and, the, and the hot pokers and the nipple clams, okay, I'm here for all of that. But we have to have some sort of foundation, some sort of center to come back to. We can't be that wild all the fucking time. Again, this is the Sagittarius Scorpio here telling you, <laughs> bring it back to center because you have to have a focal point of foundation. And like, like my fellow shaman said, if it starts with sex, it'll end over sex. You got to get your foundation right because I want you to be careful because with sex magic, like with any kind of spell that's cast, usually the more intention you have and the more intense the spell was cast, the more potent it is and the more effective. So if you're having sex with a sex warlock, witch, whatever, who's channeling Luciferian energy, if the more intense, they can do this through slow sex too, but there will still be a certain intensity even to the slow sex. You cannot cast a spell ho-hum. You can't be like, blah, blah, blah. If you have more intensity and fire and passion and good stuff, you, just like in the movies with intention, that spell carries more fire to it. And so a sex witch will use intense sex to work magic against you while you're in the throes of passion and you don't know it. <laughs> so be very careful about people who seem like they want to have hard, rough sex all the time or get in all these positions all the time. Be careful with that. Just that's all I can tell you. Just just girl. <laughs> so, then I look at the Trinity as like as like an example of like a masculine feminine energetic balance and a type of polyamorous union, non-sexual between God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, because technically they're three in one, one being three different expressions, or three different personalities, or three different beings who function as one. The way that, when there's some people, there's even like some, some gay couples that I've met who, who say they don't have sex with each other, who they're just strictly with each other because they enjoy each other's company that fucking much. And there's other forms of intimacy that they pursue, probably all kinds of meditations and things. There's a million different ways that we can actually be intimate with a person without it being sexual. What Lucifer does is just make people default to sex, like lickety split and skip over the the wide, beautiful variety. There's so much beauty in life, but what the devil does is try to get you right back to that feeling you had. And then he wants you to skip over all the good shit in between. But people who, this sort of balanced intimacy really testifies against those who over-sexualize their relationships and, and really labor under the delusion that they can build a, any type of relationship off of sex. To me, that's called playing house child. It ain't nothing real there. And, but if you read through the scripture, the way like God and Jesus Christ defend the Holy Ghost, which in my opinion is the spirit, the dove the, of fire is like the feminine expression of God. I have a problem with people say like, God is she. Well, she is. He's also he. I think that that's, to me, that's, that's point blank with the way the dove is. There's nothing a dove that's pictured as any kind of like masculine way. And so, but Jesus was saying in the scripture, how you can be forgiven for anything, murder. I'm not saying go murder people and then go run and ask for forgiveness because the intention is all wrong there. Cheating. I'm not saying go cheat or do any of these things. And then just think you can go run and ask for forgiveness. It's not like that. You have to have a deep conviction in your heart to be forgiven of anything. It can't be presumptuously done. And so, but what Jesus was saying is that, 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 a, that a human will be forgiven of any fucking thing. He said, you could talk shit about God. You can talk shit about the lamb, about Jesus himself. But they said, anybody mm. who blasphemes the Holy Ghost 
will not be forgiven. And that is the only thing that, that you cannot be forgiven of. The way that God and Jesus, the masculine expressions of the Trinity are protective of the Holy Spirit is like touching to me on levels that I cannot explain. And I love that beautiful dynamic and that expression. Okay. They like talk about us. Don't talk about our girl though. We're not having it. Okay. <laughs> We're not having this bullshit. <laughs> so. But echoing my own point, Lucifer has placed a web over the world, which causes people to forego true connection and deep fulfillment in exchange for fast, cheap experiences, be they sexual or other. <laughs> okay. But instead of going in sex first or thrill first, we need to go in connection first. Like I was saying earlier, the devil tried to change the dynamic of his relationship with Jesus Christ by offering him the fool's gold in the form of riches and pleasure in this world. That so many people fall prey to. Okay, but connections are everything. But see, people become too afraid to, to, to render the vulnerability required to experience true intimacy. And then they settle for just having sex because they don't want to really truly risk everything emotional this is a cheap version of how shit's supposed to be it's cowardly and it's bitch assness to want to hop around naked and have sex with like check your emotions at the door you want to have an experience but don't want to fully immerse yourself in it this is what christ defines as being lukewarm you're not really hot you're not really cold you're not really in you're not really out you want to you want snow but you want it like kind of lukewarm you don't you want shit exactly how you want it, but not how God intended for it to be. This is a problem. Be careful with fucking around with the devil like that. Daniel chapter 8 in verse 25. And this will be the last thing I talk about here because I think I'm going to divide this into another, another segment. So I'll just close it off after this. Daniel 8 and chapter 25 says, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. This is talking again about the Antichrist. What stands out to me in this scripture here is how it says, and by peace shall destroy many. The, one of the craftiest ways that Lucifer will infiltrate you, your camp, your camp being your own personal fortitude and everything, or your friends, family, lovers, and loved ones, is through peace. I think about how child molesters will groom families, go in there speaking peace, and have a long game. Lucifer is a very long game. He's not in a rush. He ain't gonna worry. He knows his time is short. He doesn't have forever. But he understands that it takes patience to break some people and to break into some situations and dynamics. And he's willing to wait. And I think about like child molesters and different sort of predatory people, people who meet you on apps and groom you for sex so they can cast spells on you or get into your house to steal shit. There's all kinds of ways that people will come with a peaceful face, a peaceful look, peaceful words. But as the Bible says, believe them not because they have seven abominations in their heart. See, God is trying to get you to study people and to learn and give a fuck about the intentions of people and not whatever you're trying to do with people. This is how people get themselves hurt. Not really giving a fuck about who people are and just hanging out with people and shit. No, it matters who people are. You know, who the fuck knows who and we need to, we need to be studying people and not just running off of people. Or trusting people, just letting people in because they ask or want to. But this talks about how the Antichrist in time to come won't come in waging war through flattery, through peace. He's going to wiggle his way in and then reveal his true colors. But by then he will have, have destroyed shit. So the warning here is to be prayerful and to get close enough to God so that you can not be deceived by somebody who comes to you speaking peace when really there is no peace. Okay, and that's where I'm going to close this one. So I'm going to release these over two separate weeks. Again, this is Devan and Serafino, the host of the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast. The website is sexdrugsandjesus.com on YouTube, Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast. 
and the retail website is down under apparel. I will see you on the next episode where we continue talking about Lucifer's devices and be doing my part to be sure that you're no longer ignorant of his devices, but that you can see Lucifer coming a mile away and truly begin to enjoy a more fulfilled life. Thank you for tuning in this time. I will see you shortly. Thank you all so much for joining us today and for taking some time to invest into yourself and into the lives of your loved ones. Please visit us at sexdrugsandjesus.com and check out our resource page, our spiritual service offerings, my blog, my books, and other writings that God has partnered with me to create. Find us on any social media platform. Stay strong, my people, and just remember that everything is going to be all right.